Hello everybody! What I'm going to be showing you today is something that for the longest time was considered impossible until very recently and I'm talking about Windows NT 4.0 the PowerPC version running on an IBM RS6000 43P Model 140 which was a very common RS6000 in fact this is probably the single most common PowerPC workstation from IBM. This was made when Unix workstations were still very popular and when these things would get all sorts of uses from servers to desktops. In fact, that's what this was sold as, both a server and a desktop. And this system sold quite well. There's just one problem with it and that was this system, even though it said in its announcement letter that it would run Windows NT4, just a few months afterwards IBM and Microsoft would cancel the agreement of porting Windows NT to PowerPC. And so the PowerPC port of Windows NT was abandoned and it would never run on this system. Or would it? Because that's what I'm going to show you today. This IBM 43P Model 140 booting and running Windows NT. It's very jank. A lot of stuff doesn't work. Well, not too much doesn't work, but I was unable to get ARC to install to the hard disk, though maybe it's because I've got a large 73 gig hard disk in here. And also, notably, the network card, if you try to use it, it just crashes the system. Like, it'll just say that there's a system hardware error and you can't actually use it. Now, I mean a full-on blue screen. So, the networking on board doesn't work, and the sound works, but there's one missing piece in the puzzle that has to be done to get this system to boot, and that is give it a video card it likes. So I learned about this because some YouTuber did a nine hour or something ridiculous like that, a long, long stream of just constantly trying to install this operating system and trying to get it to work. This long, long ordeal, but I learned a few things. First is that Windows NT will boot and run on this system. And the second is, the missing piece to the puzzle that many people have been unable to get working is the video card. You need to have a video card that was supported in Windows NT4 for this thing to work. You have to have either a S3864, which is probably the most common one, or a Ytech P9100, which is a lot less common and pretty rare. And your best luck of finding one is ironically in another RS6000. And the problem with those cards is, you just can't find them, but you can find the S3, however. At the same time, there's also another important thing I'd like to point out, and that is, this might work with the GXT 150P, but I have not tested it because I don't have one of those cards. But anyways, this now has an S3 864 installed instead of the card I had, which was a GXT 2500P. And this means that the system is now ready to run Windows NT. As I was unable to get the system to boot from the hard disk, I've got the ARC floppy in here, and so it's going to take a while. So we've got our codes flashing on the screen, and it's going to be stuck at F05 because Windows NT does not write to this. Now this is a big deal because there's no emulation for PowerPC Windows, and previously if you wanted to get one of these, you had to find either the hard to find 7248, even harder to find 7020, and the especially rare PowerPC ThinkPads, which can cost hundreds if not thousands of dollars used because collectors love them. So right now we've got a garbage screen. This is normal. This is something to do with the BIOS, I'm fairly sure, because you've taken out the video BIOS, and the onboard BIOS isn't properly initializing the card. And by the way, when you install this card in the system, it has to be at the very bottom PCI slot. We've got our boot chime. And it's still flashing codes. <coughs> so it's going to be stuck on F40 as it loads it from the floppy disk. I don't know why it's not properly booting from the hard disk, but it works with the floppy disk. And this is a little more than just to show that it works in case you wanted a power PCNT box that's actually obtainable before somebody writes an emulator for it. 
The other interesting thing is that the system uses the E30 HAL, and it also wants you to use a non-existent HAL for the 7042, and in fact it calls itself the 7042 inside Windows. So F05, we've got our prep loader. Well, our prep arc loader, that is, because on this system it loads from the disk and not from the ROM like on most arc systems. So we're going to go to uh, configuration display menu. Just to show you what it says, 7042 is the how required and 7042 is 7043. We're going to check our uh, environment variables. Memory map. PCI devices. Notice the 864 chip. That is our video card that we've plugged in. And also, interestingly, it's an 825 SCSI controller instead of the 810, even though we are using the 810 driver from what I know. So we're just going to go to boot it now. We've got our MBR. Nope, we are not going to clear this. I don't know why I hit residual data. Let's go to boot menu and let's boot Windows NT on this machine. As you can see it's got that font because we're using the S3 card. But something very interesting is that with this hard disk and CPU it boots Windows NT so much faster than the 40P does. And it's very interesting to see what would have happened if IBM still went in the direction of Windows NT for PowerPC? We would have had a very, very fast and zippy PowerPC box. Alas, this was not to be. And as we can see, 7042 Networking, like I said, I have not set up because it does not work, so that's probably the other reason it's a little quick right now. But even then, installing this thing, it clears the blue screen really fast. And as you can see, we can play Solitaire on here. This works. And of course, we can also play the game that we have to play. Three D pinball. If I have four, it works in full screen too. I'm playing one handed, so it's very jank. But as you can see, it works. Look, it's working on this power PC box. Very cool, isn't it? Let's hit F4. Quit out of here. And as you can see, there you have it. Windows NT on a model that many people said was impossible. Running just as you'd expect. Very fast. That's all that needs to be said. And... You know, previously it was an exclusive club, like trying to sign up for Blue Sky, where you had to know the right person or get a hold of the right hardware. But being that lots of people have 7043s or can obtain a 7043 very easily, the big limiting factor is getting a video card for this, which is an S3864. Just take the BIOS chip out, slap it in, and boom, you've got yourself a nice... Windows NT Power PC box that previously you would have had to desperately seek out and get lucky to find. And now you don't have to do that anymore because they've made tons of these 43Ps and you can find them easily. So if you want a box to run NT4 on, just get a 7043. Very, well, 
It's very easy to get compared to the other machines, put it this way. But other than that, it's very, very nice. It's, it runs really fast, and I'm pretty impressed by how it works. I mean, the networking doesn't work. I'll have to deal with that later. I might try putting in another network card, maybe another weekend or something. I might just slap a network card in, see what happens, because the onboard networking just crashes the system. And honestly, if you get one of these, chances are you're just going to use it with AIX, and you probably still can't run Solaris or NT3.5 one, but... You know, still, it's a very fascinating machine. If you want to run NT for PowerPC, this is a very easy way to do it. Very jank in the way I'm currently doing it. But that's all that needs to be said. This is very, very interesting. I mean, if you have one of these, go try it. If you don't have one, I wouldn't run it out and buy it just for NT. I'd probably just use it for uh, AIX, because it's a pretty decent AIX machine, but that's pretty much all I can say, you know. Very easy to get one of these. Just like how it's very easy to sign up for the Fediverse compared to trying to go to Blue Sky. Which is a pain to get into right now. You gotta know a guy with an invite, and they've got some stupid system where if, if the person gets banned, you get banned too, because even the passenger gets in trouble on Blue Sky. So yeah, this is a pretty good machine. That's all that needs to be said. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more. And like I said, I got this idea from finding some like nine hour stream or something and here we are. It works.